Hi all, we're going to have a look at another game of Natalia Pog O Nina, and uh, this game was against Romanov. Um, so she was white, she played e4, and the instructive theme I think is how to exploit the Bolzlavsky hole. There's a very good transformation of pawn structure in this game which is demonstrated. So if you review the pawn structure overview, and the Bol Bolzlavsky hole was when black you know, gives up d5 in a way by playing e5, so there will never be a pawn to sort of protect the square. So in this game, e5 is played here. And, you know, classically you might think, well, d d5, you know, you exchange off this bishop and you get a big knight to d5, and that sometimes happens, but you can't really rely on that. And sometimes you do need to transform the pawn structure into something else. And we'll see in this game that white actually sealed up the classic Bolzevsky hole, but in doing so, in this pawn moving here, we see that there becomes a strategy on the light squares, like these squares, and even you know this square on on this side. But uh, this is facilitated because White was able to use uh, you know this this e4 square to exchange off some of the defenders of the Black King. So that that's the strategic idea I think this this game really you know emphasises. So Bishop e6 castles, Bishop e7. Rookie one castles. So bishop f3. So white's reinforcing, you know, the pressure on d5. And there's a nifty knight, sorry, a nifty rook maneuver coming up now to even, you know, reinforce the pressure on d5 even more. Just to make sure that black will never be able to liberate easily with d5. So a4 as well. So keeping a grip on b5 as well. Because if b5, b4, that will dislodge this knight from controlling d5. So everything's about the d5 you know, pressure at the moment. B6, now knight D2. So notice though, this, this knight wasn't doing a great deal, especially after B6. So it's rerouting now to actually eye this square. So there's something kind of aesthetic about trying to control these two squares, which, you know, are near each other on the light squares. It's, you know, a, a part of a, you know, broader light square strategy, we could say. So this knight maneuvers to G3. So look at this, white's controlling nicely now, D5 and F5. And now it even brings the rook in to bear more pressure on d5. So knight b8, rook d2. So how many pieces now? One, two, three, four, five. All eyeing to make sure that black cannot play d5. Now we see bishop f4. And now it's as if, well, once white's conquered, you know, logically these squares in terms of pressure, it's as if white is also bearing down now on this square with this next plan which is another light square, by playing the move h4. Because if a pawn comes to h5, it's restraining black's pawn structure a bit more, making g6 a little bit more difficult without actually you know, causing this pawn to be targeted. So we see here queen b7 and now h5. So look at this restraint strategy and how the squares are starting to be dominated, especially these light squares. So it's all you know, a kind of positional restraint you know, masterpiece at the moment. So the bishop e7. But here is where you know a lot of players would find this very you know, controversial this decision to transform this structure of the classic Bolzlavsky hole into something else but Natalia you know she does this because white gains the e4 square so she's really making a more exploitable weakness in in black's king if white can get to the black king then uh, then that will be the end of the game so the classic hole is swapped off here but notice also the, these squares are going to come alight soon. So e takes knight d7. So now white has the possibility of knight e4, but first Natalia brings the rook in with rook a3, quite kind of another nifty uh, rook maneuver. And now queen f1. So eyeing a6, tying down the the white, sorry, the black queen a bit. Bishop f8. Now knight e4. So we see the strategy on on this diagonal starting to emerge, trying to get rid of some of black's key defenders. So bishop e7 and now rook b3. So this is putting pressure on the queen side simultaneously as well as the king side. So knight e4, one of the defenders has gone. So if the queen can start an attack later, if the queen can get over the king side, this is going to be more tricky for black, especially now after knight c5. So the other knight is not hanging around black's king. And white controversially gives up the dark squared bishop. So bishop takes c5. But it's really to try and get the exploitable, exploitable weaknesses out into the position. You know, it's no good just having theoretical advantages. So there's now 
you know, definitely the king's safety has become less. And now the queen comes into the attack now with queen d3. So it's trying, trying to help the bishop to get a strong kingside attack now. So bishop g5, rook d1, rook a8, and now queen f3. So the queen wants to be in front of the bishop to threaten things like queen h7 check. Rook c4, now queen f5. So it's very difficult now for black to defend on this diagonal. And look at that early restraint with h5, you know, tying down black black to stop, you know, g6. So it's all coming together, the light square strategy, and giving up the Bolzavsky hole for this transformation where this diagonal was, was much further weakened, especially with the absence of the two knights. So now rook f3, and look how the white pieces are swarming in. These rooks are swarming into the king's side. So bishop f6, b3, chasing the rook back a bit. Rook c3, and now the other rook is preparing to come in. So offering temporarily the c2 pawn, but uh, that that's really not possible without, um, you know, allowing a, a discovered attack from the bishop. So black did decided not to take that c2 pawn, but actually play queen c7. And now check, and now there's the there's a beautiful positional sacrifice. Just you know, it's it's got a very strong theoretical basis that the black king's position has been compromised anyway, and the white rooks were able to swarm in. So Natalia plays rook f6. So temporarily giving up, you know, material, but getting more material now because snapping up one pawn already for the exchange, and now two pawns for the exchange, and now there's a beautiful finish coming up with Bishop F5, Black took on D5, and I wonder if you can spot the final winning move. I'll give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, Natalia played Rook E6 check, and Black resigned, as if takes. Then there's queen e6 mate. And then anything else, then just rook takes d6, discover check, winning the queen, winning, you know, massive material advantage. So let's have a look at this game in overview and summary. It was an excellent demonstration, I think, of the Bolzlaski hole and how you can, if, if you can't directly exploit it with a knight outpost, you can transform it and try and dominate, you know, these light squares in particular. I think that's, that's the demo that this game shows of how to handle this structure and also I like the restraints on both sides of the board you know restraining black's pawns on on both sides with uh, you know the a4 and then h4 h5 so there's a kind of symmetrical restraint strategy going on in this game as well as the central restraint continually stopping black from playing the move d5 so we see now you know these squares are being restrained the pawn structure is being restrained on both sides and now the, the transformation strategy starts with knight d5. So seemingly giving up, you know, one of the strategic trumps of the position. But in fact, it's making, you know, the weaknesses of, of black more exploitable. In particular, the king is a much more exploitable weakness. So both knights are taken off, and then the queen comes in for the kill, really. You know, heading the bishop on, on bishop uh, with queen f5 for this battery. And then the rooks start coming in. So we see this lovely exchange sack, you know, really theoretically um, supported because it's, it's immediately getting back material in any case as well as the Black King still being you know, unsafe for the final killing move Rook E6. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.